unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade has had enough, and he goes in on Canelo, Charlo, and Billy Joe Saunders. We're going to talk about that. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App and the Patreon family, we work and also sign up for ESPN Plus. Use my link; it does help the channel when you guys click on that link. ESPN Plus, they got you covered. Ton of original content, docu series, documentary, archive of fights, and a bunch of content. You know, in the sports world, if you guys are interested, use the ESPN Plus link. You can get it as a standalone app, where you can bundle it. ESPN Plus with Hulu and Disney Plus, all three apps for one low price. Again, it does help the channel when you guys click on that link. Now, Demetrius Andrade, he did a recent interview with Dan Raphael. The link will be in the description. And he sounds pretty frustrated. I want to read some of the quotes. Again, for the full write-up, you guys can click the link in the description. Andrade says, on my end, what, what would we would like to do is be a three-division world champion going up to 168 and a fight. Billy Joe Saunders. It was something that was supposed to happen. It's something that is going to help with my career as far as locking in Canelo, Charlo, Triple G, if that's possible. I'm looking to do something like that. I dismantle people. Dismantle is my new name. Call me Mr. Dr. Dismantle. That's who I'm going to be. He says, Billy Joe Saunders acting like a little bitch and Canelo acting like a little bitch. Billy Joe is acting like a B because he wants to sit there and say he's willing to fight me. But when it comes down to it, you hear, oh, he's in the Canelo sweepstakes. So therefore, you're Canelo's B. B. And waiting for Canelo to be like, come on, Billy Joe Saunders. Let's make this fight happen where we can fight, make some good money and win, lose or draw. It's the top guys out there fighting and making it happen. But if that doesn't happen... I do want to unify the middleweight division with Charlo if he's willing and ready to make that happen. I'll fight either Charlo, the WBC champ Jamal, I'll whoop his ass, or if the little one, the w WBC's Jamel Charlo wants to come up, he can get it too. Those are the fights I'm looking for. I want to go and fight Billy Joe Saunders. It's an easy fight to be made because we're both with the same network, same promotion, and there's no reason not to make that fight. The real excuse is he's waiting because he says we're in the Canelo sweepstakes. Billy Joe is saying he's in the Canelo sweepstakes, but how long? That's been dragging on for a very long time. There's no more Billy Joe in the sweepstakes. How long is Billy Joe going to depend on Canelo, who has had all this bull going on with his contract? Canelo making $35 million for his last few fights, so he's good. He's okay. He can live. He don't have to fight if he don't want to. He can retire today and be good financially if he wants. Billy Joe Saunders probably can't. I probably can't. Why are we waiting for Canelo? He goes on to say, it's just hard to do anything with anyone who has a big name because there are excuses like with Charlo. Okay, you just fought Dervinchenko and it was a good fight. We offered Charlo $7 million and I was willing to take the fight. We never got offered seven million to go over to Showtime and do that fight. The answer would be yes on our side. Let's do it. He said, no disrespect to the Luke Keelers or the Liam Williamses, but me beating Liam Williams don't do nothing for me. I've been fighting for a very long time. I've been in it for a very long time. I'm ready to fight the guys I need to fight. Goes on to say, no, I'm not fighting on those cards. It's something that is not brought to my attention. He's talking about a uh, Devin Haney card with Gamboa or Danny Jacobs versus Gabe Rosado. Realistically, how can I fight under Devin Haney or Danny Jacobs? You know? 
He says, it's cool. It ain't going to be the first time or the second time that I had to go through this. But at the end of the day, I don't know my window in the sport. I've been fighting whoever they put in front of me. I want the bigger names. I want to fight the guys I should be fighting. I'm going to fight whoever I have to fight because I love what I do. But all right, guys, how long are we going to keep doing this until I get a big fight? It gets boring for the people and it gets boring for me. End quote. Listen. I, I feel two ways about this. I feel for Demetrius Andre because what he's saying is, I, I would say, partly true. Um, I think the fights that he should be easily getting are any of the guys on the zone. See, the, the game is getting very, very chippy and it is 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 getting kind of blurred, the lines. Some people are advocating for this whole Andrade versus Charlo, but I don't see that because, listen, Andrade is a terrific fighter. Him and Charlo is a great fight. No, you know, no questions about that. But in my opinion, we got to stop rewarding guys who have, for whatever reason, haven't been able to work on their brand and their branding and take the proper fights. And then this is the decisions partly due to decisions that they've made. And then you think they're just going to get the, the major marquee fights. It really doesn't work like that because boxing is a business. You know, you got to put yourself in front of the crowd. You know, Demetrius Andre would have been a great fight for him to fight Derevchenko. Like, and then like before Charlo, you see what I'm saying? That would have been a great fight. That would have been better than anyone he's fought on the zone, you know? So those opportunities aren't coming by you got to get with your promoter you're not going to be able to just clout chase um the charlo situation and as far as eddie hearn i don't believe him this this is the same guy that said that tyson fury was not going to fight deontay wilder and then they fought and then they fought again and they're about to fight a third time you know so he's saying he offers seven million he also said he offered Luis Ortiz $7 million to fight Joshua, and none of those fights happened. So I don't really care what he's talking about um, because he's a promoter. You know, promoters, they're, they're trying to promote and make themselves look good and make their fighters look good, whatever. But I don't really, I'm not really pressed about the $7 million And, you know, Andre's saying we didn't get $7 million to go fight on Showtime. But how, how does that work? So... You offered Charlo $7 million to fight on DAZN. You know he, he's not going to go fight on DAZN because DAZN's an unproven commodity. So you think that Showtime has to, or Hal Heyman, or PBC, or Fox has to put up whatever ridiculous money that uh, DAZN allegedly was willing to put up? You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's not even how, how things work. You see what I'm saying? That's like... Canelo can't get Floyd Mayweather to fight on DAZN. Floyd Floyd is the boss. And in terms of branding, and I'm not comparing Charlo to Floyd Mayweather, but what I am saying is if you look at the strength of brand and activity and who's fought the higher quality, higher caliber names recently, it's clearly Jamal Charlo, you know? So he would probably be the A-side in that equation. He just fought Devonchenko. He already had a pay-per-view, you know. He's fought in Showtime main events, you know. So it's like, why would he do what, what Eddie Hearn is telling him to do? It just doesn't make sense. It's just like when Eddie Hearn said that Javante Tank Davis should go fight on DAZN for Tevin Farmer. You know what I'm saying? That's just not simply put how it works. And why are the DAZN reporters keep putting out the and you know also dan rayfield they keep putting out this information about what eddie hearn said and allegedly seven million dollars and, and all that as if it's up to charlo the pressure should be on the zone fighters to make the zone fights listen the game is getting screwy here's why you look at pbc if two guys are affiliated with al Heyman and the pbc organization then there's a high likelihood that they'll fight within a few fights right dariyevchenko is with al Heyman. jamal charlo is with al Heyman. boom the fights 
were made, right? Tony Harrison with Al Heyman, Jermail Charlo with Al Heyman, boom, they fought. You know, Erickson Leuven, Al Heyman, Charlo, Jermail, Al Heyman, they fought, right? And this is very similar. Andre is in a very similar situation as kind of Devin Haney and definitely Terrence Crawford, where they're phenomenal talents, but they're kind of the odd man out based on promotional entities. You know, as far as me, I'm a true speaker and a true seeker. You can't omit that these are the actual facts of boxing. There is a business. There is a, um, you know, chain of command. There are things that have to be factored into it. Now, there's great fights, but you, you can't have one guy doing the heavy lifting and then expect whatever fight you want to get made to be made. So, like, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not feeling the fact that there's more Charlo versus Andre talk. Keep in mind, Andre was scheduled to fight one of the Charlos, Jermail Charlo, on an American Devin Alexander card years ago. But for whatever reason, he pulled out his money wasn't good or whatever. And he pulled out. So how is that Charlo's fault? So he's saying he wants to fight the Charlos, but you had an opportunity, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't work. Cool. So that's not really the Charlos fault. You can't really say that they're ducking because at the at the heart of it, the Charlos have more options than, you know, that are likely because PBC will mix and match them. Chris Eubank and Jamal Charlo, that's certainly a fight that can happen. If Jamal wants to move up to 168, he already called out David Benavidez. That's certainly a fight that can happen, you know? So it's like Demetrius Andrade is the odd man out. And I would look at it like this. Like, you're not going to ride. If I was like a PBC fighter, I would be like, you're not going to, or like not even a PBC fighter, but the, the PBC people. If, if a company ain't even making the in-house fights that they could make then why would you expect them to just save the day why would they just expect you to save the day and make this inner network crossover fight so i think we need to really start asking the tough questions in boxing right like like you look at i said terrence crawford he's in a very similar position how come terrence crawford was with top rank manny pacquiao was with top rank yet they never enforced that fight, right? They never made Lomachenko move up to fight Terrence Crawford at 140 when he was at 140. You know, these would be big name fights that would give him a lot of praise if he's able to beat a Pacquiao or if he could have beat a Lomachenko at 140. But top rank didn't do it. They didn't want to make those fights. Now you look at Demetrius Andre. I feel for him in, in a way because I think he is uh, a squandered talent because he's not getting the fights that he should be in and he's definitely capable but at the same time look at the branding and your own promotional people aren't putting you in those positions they putting you in there with lucas keeler possibly liam williams next because he just got a first round knockout you know artur akov uh selecki they're giving you these types of fights right but you can't you're on the same side as Caleb Smith, Canelo Alvarez, Gennady Golovkin, Danny Jacobs, Billy Joe Saunders, and you can't get none of those fights. So for me, the game is getting screwy. Charlo Andre sounds good, but you can't even fight people on your own side. Why would you expect the the rival promotional team to come to your savior and you know just roll out the red carpet and do it for boxing that's not how it works that's not how business works people uh, again andre is not getting the quality fights it, there's put it this way answer this question ask yourself this question and answer it are there more readily available fights that do you feel would give demetrius andre a lot of credit with pbc or the zone and then if, if I'm asking that question, I would say there's probably more hype fights that he can easily fight on his own. I just said them. Caleb Smith, Canelo, Triple G, Billy Joe Saunders. That's four guys. That's four guys. So why would I focus on 
one guy when you know there's promotional beefs and different game plans and you know this we're trying to make household names and pay-per-view stars they they pbc it's not their obligation to cater to another network's fighter and help him shine or give him opportunities right i understand in a perfect world like you know the best fight the best but that's not the reality there's great fighters in bellator that will never fight the guys in the ufc but only in boxing do people play this game where we're supposed to play dumb like i said there's there's great there's aaron pico or somebody or michael venom page they're not fighting the ufc guys over there at bellator you know it's just understood that those are harder fights to make and the ufc's too busy doing their own thing bellator's doing their own thing you know even in boxing you see this eddie hearn has a stable of uk fighters and frank warren has a stable of uk fighters but once again people keep clamoring for andrade versus charlo the reason why you don't see me uh, huge on that is because I understand the process and I understand the business. How come Frank Warren, Daniel Dubois versus Anthony Joshua? Why don't they make that? Why don't they make Daniel Dubois versus Dillian White? Why don't they do that? You know, because there's obviously a business and Frank Warren got his fighters on BT Sports and Eddie Hearn got his fighters on DAZN and Sky Sports and there's internetwork conflict sides of the street and all that so these are major reasons why some of these fights aren't being made but the real question andre should be asking himself and and fans is not trying to pit him against the other black fighter charlo who again there there's so much promotional sides of the street these these obstacles would have to be like for example if andre fought charlo they would have to agree like who's the a side who's the b side how much you get how much do i get you know uh what network is it going to be on is it going to be on showtime is it going to be on fox is it going to be on the zone is it going to be a pay-per-view the zone doesn't do pay-per-view you know they have to agree on all these little parameters not to mention possible clauses and rematch clauses and stuff like that they'd have to agree on all that but the process becomes simplified if andrade gets an opportunity with a DAZN fighter. So that's what he should be pushing for. You got Canelo, Billy Joe, all these dudes over there, fight a DAZN fighter. You know, fight Canelo, you know, he's suing. But even before he was suing, that, that was only recently that, that he even filed a lawsuit. They haven't even went to court. They've never given Andre this opportunity. Billy Joe Saunders failed a drug test and then still got called out by Andre, still didn't make the fight. So. You know, I, I'm not really, I'm not really a fan of that. I think there's tons of fights that he can have in house, and they're not giving him the opportunity. Even a fight with like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., they gave it to Jacobs. Jacobs already had a great fight, and I'm not Jacobs. That's my dude, so I'm not you know knocking him. But what I'm saying is, they're not even looking after Andre. You know, so these are the decisions that Andre made. He signed with Eddie Hearn. He, he got a burst into the office like yo i'm just wasting away fighting these journeymen or mediocre people i need a big name you know if not release me if you can't do nothing for my contract and then go to pbc or wherever you feel you would fit in but you know it, it's it, we're starting to see that we're starting to see um fighters who have teamed up with whoever they wanted to team up and and that's their oblig that's their prerogative they can team up with whoever they want to team up with and um, fight with whatever promoter or network they want to. But then when you can't get the fights in your own stable, then don't be surprised when you can't get fights, you know, across the street either. S simple as. Let me know what you guys think. That's my thoughts. I'll be talking about this much more. You know, hopefully Demetrius Andre does get a, a good fight. You know, he's calling. He look. He sounds frustrated. You know, he's calling everybody the B word and. He just can't get no fights and, and I, that has to be frustrating but this is also that's why you have to be very um delicate with your brand about how you brand yourself and who you align yourself with and they have to put forth whatever you guys agree to whatever when you guys sign um they said they could do this this and that for you and whatever the mission statement was you gotta 
hold them to that put their feet to the fire eddie hearn got to give you a big fight and there's plenty of it how does eddie hearn have billy joe saunders Caleb smith um triple g now he has pretty much everybody except for canelo alvarez who golden boy has but maybe not for long depending on this out this outcome of the lawsuit you know and even though these are all in-house fights and, and all have the same promoter we talking about charlo andre no nah, that's backwards benjamin button you know it, it just it don't make no sense you so the fight that's inherently harder to make you want me to stress that but then there the zone ain't taking care of him you know where's john skipper where's lynn blavnik to get demetrius andre a pop and fight you know they're not making devin haney ryan garcia so you know these other fights are, are going to be harder to facilitate they're not making demetrius andre versus anybody within his stable point blank period we unpack so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing